Hello everyone and happy noon. My name is Michaela Lagerman and one of the silver linings of these unprecedented, uncertain, and sometimes unfair times, how many times have you heard those three words lately, <laughs> um, is that I'm able to connect with Trinity even when I'm not at home in Robisonia. So this is today's noon devotional. I'd like to invite you to light a candle if you have one, um, just to sort of set the tone. So I'll have mine here. So let's start in prayer. Um, today, I, I want to start with less of a prayer and more of a meditation exercise that someone had taught me about a year ago. So we'll be thinking about our hands and ending in prayer. So sitting with your palms up, resting in your lap, eyes closed, tune into your breathing and relax your tension points. Just focus inward, focus on who you are, the person you are that God made you to be. Become aware of the air that's at your fingertips, between your fingers, on the palm of your hand. Experience the fullness, the strength, the maturity of your hands. Think of your hands and think of the most unforgettable hands you have known the hands of your mom, or maybe your dad, or your grandparents. Remember the oldest hands that have rested in your hands. Think of the hands of a newborn child, maybe a niece or a nephew, of the incredible perfection, the delicacy, of the hands of a child. Once upon a time, your hands were the same size. Think of all that your hands have done since then. Almost all that you have learned is through your hands, turning yourself over, crawling and creeping, walking, balancing yourself, learning to hold something for the first time, feeding yourself, washing and bathing, dressing yourself. At one time, your greatest accomplishment was tying your own shoes. Think of all the learning your hands have done and how many activities they've mastered, the things that they've made. Remember the day that you could write your own name for the first time. Our hands were not just made by God for themselves, but for others. How often were they given to help another? Remember all the kinds of work they've done the tiredness and the aching they have known, the cold and the heat, the soreness and the bruises. Remember the tears that they've wiped away, our own or another's, the blood that they have bled, the healing that they've experienced. How much hurt or anger or even violence have they expressed and how much gentleness, tenderness, and love have they given? How often have they been folded in prayer? Both a sign of their powerlessness and of their power. There's a mystery which we discover in the hand of a woman or a man or a person that we love. There are the hands of a doctor or a nurse, an artist, a conductor, a pastor, hands that you might never forget. Now, raise your right hand slowly and gently place it over your heart. Press more firmly until your hand picks up the beat of your own heart, that most mysterious of all human sounds, one's own heartbeat, a rhythm learned in the womb from the heartbeat of one's own mother. Press more firmly for a moment and then release your hand and hold it just a fraction from your clothing. Experience the warmth between your hand and your heart. Now lower your hand back to your lap, very carefully as if you were carrying your heart, for it does. When you extend your hand to another, it's not just bone and skin, it is your heart. A handshake is a heart transplant. 
Think of all the hands that have left their imprint on you. Fingerprints and hands that have left their imprint on you. Fingerprints and handprints are heart prints that can never be erased. The hand has its own memory. Think of all the places that carry your handprints and all the people who bear your handprint. They are indelible and they will last forever. God, thank you for letting us be your hands in this world. Renew our strength this day to continue to do your good work. May our hearts and our hands be ever turned towards you. Amen. So today's scripture is Psalm 30, near and dear to my own heart. It goes, I will exalt you, Lord, for you lifted me out of the depths and did not let my enemies gloat over me. Lord, my God, I called to you for help and you healed me. You, Lord, brought me up from the realm of the dead. You spared me from going down into the pit. Sing the praises of the Lord, you, his faithful people. Praise his holy name, for his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may stay for the night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. When I felt secure, I said, I will never be shaken. Lord, when you favored me, you made my royal mountain stand firm. But when you hid your face, I was dismayed. To you, Lord, I called. To the Lord, I cried for mercy. What is gained if I am silenced, if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you? Will it proclaim your faithfulness? Hear, Lord, and be merciful to me. Lord, be my help. You turned my wailing into dancing. You removed my sackcloth and clothed me with joy, that my heart may sing your praises and not be silent. Lord, my God, I will praise you forever. So Rachel Held Evans, an author and blogger whom I love, uh, was known for her transparency in dealing with the hard stuff of life. And she said something about the Psalms that has really stuck with me. She said, the Psalms are, in a sense, God's way of holding space for us. They invite us to rejoice, wrestle, cry, complain, offer thanks, and shout obscenities before our maker without self-consciousness and without fear. Psalms defeat our tendency to try to be holy without being human first. Oh, I just love that. That's why I love Psalm 30 so much. There's no facade. It covers all of those bases that Rachel Held Evans was talking about. Psalm 30 doesn't instinctively respond, oh, I'm good, when someone asks how you're doing. <laughs> it has no room for my own fake insistence that everything is a-okay, just because sometimes it's not. <laughs> we know God is good, but sometimes we have a hard time calling a pandemic and all the messiness that comes with it good with a capital G. Psalm 30 says, Michaela, I get you. <laughs> The part that I love the most is the ending, verses 10 through 12. I'll read them again. It's, Hear, Lord, and be merciful to me. Lord, be my help. You turn my wailing into dancing. You remove my sackcloth and clothe me with joy, that my heart may sing your praises and not be silent. Lord, my God, I will praise you forever. God doesn't promise us an easy life or a good time all the time. But what's so powerful to me is that God is working through the hard times. God turns our wailing into dancing. He removes our sackcloths and clothes us with joy. He doesn't leave us and let us work it out on our own. No, he's present in the pain and the pandemonium and the pandemic. He transforms our lives into joy, not out of spite for the brokenness, but actually through it. And that's what's giving me hope these days. We're not forgotten. We're not alone in our brokenness. We are just simply human. We're figuring it out with God. And because of that, and most importantly, we're beloved. Praise God for this truth and for the ways that he's continuing to transform us and our circumstances. I am so grateful that we are being transformed so that we can help in the transformation. So I invite you to pray for others and for the world this day. So I'll say, we ask you today 
and then together we can say, God be our joy. God, in peace we come and we ask you today, God be our joy. We pray for those who face high barriers because of this pandemic, be it job loss, financial hurt, the loss of a loved one, social, social isolation. Will you create chances for those people in our church to ask for help and for us to offer our, our help as we can? We ask you today, God be our joy. We are so grateful that you stick with us in hard moments. So we ask you today, God be our joy. Bless the people who continue to make this world run despite all the challenges. Teachers, parents, custodians, nurses, grocery store cashiers, advocates for justice, pastors, so many others. May we love and support them in these trying times. We ask you today, God be our joy. God, you know the scars on our hearts before we learn to even name them. Be with us all as we process and connect and hope in this time. We ask you today, God be our joy. Jesus, you turn our wailing into dancing. Help us be patient as we wait for that moment to come. Remind us to help one another rest in our identity as your beloved child. We ask you today, God be our joy. God, thank you for sending Jesus to the world to show us what it means to love and to hope and it's his words that we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So I send you on your way with a blessing. May your hands be blessed to be a blessing to others. May your connection to others be blessed so that you may share your griefs with one another. May your grief be blessed as it turns into dancing. May your dance moves be blessed to bring joy to yourself and others. May your joy be blessed this day and all days. May your day be blessed as we say together, amen. Thanks so much for coming. I'm sending all of my love and prayers back to Trinity and the people there. Have a great day.